everyone, the message you are about to watch is a message preached by Bishop Opu Deli Eze. This message is packed full. It's that it is anointed, it is fire-right, it is loaded, and it has the capacity to put you on your throne of enthronement. I want to encourage you as you watch this message, watch it with faith in your heart, because God will impart some great measure of anointing in your life. Yokes will be broken, chains will be destroyed, walls will crumble as you watch this message. I want you to watch it with faith in your heart and trust God that every situation in your life will turn around for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Happy. Let's take our test from Matthew chapter number 5, from verse 14 to 16. Matthew chapter number 5, from verse 14 to 16. Let's read together. It says, you are you are what you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and a given light unto all that are in the house are you with me verse what now 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is where in heaven. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Let's read together. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon the Father. We thank you for this second section. I use my spirit to you, to you. Use me beyond description. Lay your hands on me and fill me with glory. Let every man's life be touched in Jesus' name. God bless you. May be seated. All right. I want you to walk up to twenty-one persons. Stay him or her. Let your voice be heard. Tell to one person, let your voice be heard. You are not talking to somebody, you are not moving. Tell to somebody, let your voice be heard. 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 Are you prophesying? Is there a prophecy for somebody? Maybe you have not been heard now, but after now, as the glory explodes on your head, your voice will be heard. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I want us to look at the power of the media. Or the media and the projection of glory. Or the media and the projection of glory. The media and the projection of glory. Praise the Lord. I want us to look at what the media and what projection of what glory. I want us to understand that for every glory that God has deposited in our lives, He wants that glory to find super expression in the life of the people. He wants the glory to be seen and He wants the glory to be heard. Joseph said in Genesis 45 verse 13, So go and bring down my father so that he will hear and see all my glory that the Lord has blessed me with. You know, one day in the ministry of Jesus, the brothers somehow mocked him and said, Jesus, if you have become a healer, if you have become a miracle worker, why don't you go to the city that the whole world will see what you are doing? Invariably, they were telling him, don't be a local champion. This glory upon you must be projected to the ends of the earth. This glory upon you must be heard and seen. There is no essence of the celebration of glory if the glory cannot be seen. There is no essence of the celebration of glory if the glory cannot be heard. And one of the most powerful tools that God uses to project the glory of a man to a generation is the tool of the media. Some say the media. Some say the media. He said, no man lightens a candle and hides it under what? A bushel. Rather, you take it to the mountain top so that it will illuminate all and sundry. Am I communicating? So, in view of what we are going to look into, 
I believe that God is going to impart every man or woman or pastor here with the fire to be had. You will be heard, heard after now. You will be heard after now. So what is media? Right. Media is any means or a channel by which an information is propagated to a large number of people. Media is any means or a channel by which an information is propagated to a large number of people. The only way for your generation to know that somebody like you exists is when you reveal and manifest and project what God is doing with you. It is an error to carry a worldwide glory and die like a local champion. It is an error for you to be in a city and you are not visible. Nothing creates ministerial visibility like the projection of what you are doing through the power of the media. Nothing makes a man not to be desired like being in a place and people are wondering whether you are there. Let your voice be heard. Arise and shine. The glory cannot come and you remain down. The glory is an elevator and it causes the voice of men to be heard. I prophesy to somebody here. By the time the oil will rest upon you in your city, your voice will be heard. Let me tell somebody, let your voice be heard. Even Jesus believes in media. He believes that that which he has planted on your inside must be heard by every man. So media is any means or a channel by which an information is propagated to a large number of people. I believe that media is the future of the ministry. Media is the future of the ministry because if you don't want to die little, then refuse to go to media. If you don't want to be seen as a local, a local man, then you should find your way to the media. I know a man of God in this nation that is powerfully, people have fought him and all that, but one of the things that has created a positive image for his work is what media. And today, everyone is patterning their media ministry after his own. Because God has helped him through the media to caution the effect of what? Scandal. I'm not know somebody here. Every gifting of grace upon your life is not for you. Every gifting of grace upon your life is for your generation. God blesses a man for a generation. God plans glory in your life for a generation. And listen to me. I define success as in your ability to fulfill and satisfy the yearnings of your assignment. God does not reward you by the success of another man or judge you by the success of another man. I might have somebody here. Your own success can be measured when God has looked at the pedestal of priority and see that that which he has called you to do, you've been able to fulfill it, giving a, a level playing field. Am I communicating here? Let me tell someone, let your voice be heard. We raised a little force in Abuja church on Sunday. And as we go back now, we are entering into reading Abuja. Three months, 280,000. Put your hands. Prime time. After that, we are targeting ITV. 900,000. Three months. Then after that, I am moving into AIT. Put your hands together. Now listen to me, because I know that what I carry to the city of Abuja is not a local champion that entered. It is a king. God told me that the land of Abuja is the land of the reigning kings. And as a reigning king, go dear, let your voice be heard. Stand to your tell seven person, let your voice be heard. If you, if you don't want what you are doing to remain small. Now listen to me. Within the enclave of the four corners of the church, there are people that will never come to you. There are people that will not want No matter what you talk here, but listen to me. You are not an apostolic pastor in a city until you see the feast of vibration. You compel men to listen to you whether they like it or not. And listen to me. Why the misconception of people has remained strong is because they have not had you. When people hear you preach, they will change their mind. And the power of the media is that it has a way of invading people's privacy. 
You tune in your TV and it's prophet Ogwe. Somebody shall fire. You close the TV. The next day you tune it, you see my face. One day you tell yourself, let me see what this man is talking. And I tell you, a trial will catch you. Media is the future of ministry. If you want your voice, now let me expand it, even in the future of business. The BCA people here will tell you, uh, until you tell us where you are, nobody knows that we are there. So you need to discover that the world is moving on a fast plane. And you need to know the people you are called to. Me, I tell them in Abuja, I said, I came into Abuja to pastor the elite. To pastor what? I, I, listen to me. And there's something, I don't know whether you noticed, Pastor, okay? You know, when we came, we started with youth. But the, the, in the last one month, God moved the youth out and brought mature people. It's like God swept them up because I kept saying, God, I came to pastor what? I mean, I came to pastor senators, the president, the governors, young bankers who are up and mobile. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, that does not mean that the businessman will not fit it, but if you come in, the environment will change you. Yes, now, what I preach in that hall cannot be heard until I amplify my voice. Yes, Am I talking to somebody here? Listen to me. There is a Joseph of Arimathea carrying money for your ministry. Yes, until I appear on media, he can't see your face. Yes, I told us a story of a, a, a man of God in Podakot. Then, if I call his name, you know him. He told me this story from his mouth when I met him in his church. He, told, he was telling me and mama, he said, Prophet Okwi and his wife, listen to this. When he was trying to encourage us to enter into media some years back, he said, I was returning from abroad. And I alighted at Portacol uh, uh, International Airport. And as I was coming into the place where they were clearing his, uh, his uh, you know, the thing that he came back with, a woman was screaming, hey, pastor! Hey, pastor, wait! And he turned back and said, Ah, woman, what is this? He said, Ah, pastor, you are such a holy man of God. You have blessed me, even though I don't go to your church, but you are my pastor. Listen to me. When you enter media, you break the domination walls. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? You what? You break what? You tear it down. Because you are not called to church, you are called for the kingdom. I, I, somebody here say here. There are people whose life are dependent on what God has sent you to say. Saying it on the church might not be enough. But you need a platform that can project and amplify what God has called you to do. Come on, am I talking here? And the woman said, I have a gift for you. You know, there are flat envelopes that can be powerful. Don't you just flat envelope? Don't do what? You know, there are flat envelopes that can change your life. Hey! And the woman says, Pastor, I've kept this for three months now. Believe me, when I will have... Everybody must not come to your church. There are people who God has commanded to bless you. It is the beauty that will connect two of you. And he said, I've been carrying this little change. Pastor, whatever you are doing, I had you had a project. Please put it there. It's just my little offering. And pastor got back to his office and opened the flat envelope. It was 20 million. How much? Now listen to me. He has not said, Thus says the Lord. Neither has he thrown power on this woman. So is the media. I prophesy to you. Any power that wants to kill you where you are, that you, you, you will carry minister, nobody will hear your voice. If you say amen, it will end to death. Your business is going global. Let me hear the name like a thunder. So media is powerful. He told me. He told me with his mouth. He, do you know what 20 million can do? In a church. In your branch. Pastor, do you see you, uh, 20 million enter your hand for a potential church? I will relocate the pastor with you. You know what is 20 million? 1, 2, 20. For a woman you have not sweated on. Then don't underestimate the power of the media. It's very convincing. It's so powerful. Have you asked yourself why the child and seem to be succeeding? It's because they give us a package image and beyond the image they are living a false life. But we don't see their behind. 
Only what they project in the screen is what we see. You see, those bad boys know that the media is powerful. So they keep projecting those nonsense and people keep believing them. But you that carry anointing and genuine one, you are looking for money. Have you seen where money is very, very important? But I prophesy to you. Like I know there are seven people here. By January, your voice will be heard. If you say amen, money for it will land, will land on your head. Let me hear the little like the thunder. Let me tell somebody, let your voice be heard. Now, basically, we have two kinds of media. We have two kinds of media. One, we have electronic media. And we have print media. We have what and what. Can we say them? So, Spad Delegate, can you talk to me? We have what? And what again? Now, under electronic media, we have the following types of electronic media. Number one, we have television. We have television. Example of good Christian television network network we have in Nigeria is like ACBN. We have KICC. We have Hosanna. We have BCA. We have Love World and we have Love World Sad. Say Amen. Then still under the electronic media, number B, that's B, we have radio. We have what? Radio. Example of radio is 104.1 FM, Radio BCA, etc. C, we have the internet, like your YouTube, your Facebook, your emails, and stuff like that. Then we have phones. That's four. We have phones, like your iPad and your iPod operations. Praise the Lord. Now, under the print media, we have the following. Under the print media, we have the following. Under the print media, we have the following. We have one, books. Books. Don't underestimate the power of published materials. It sells you beyond the boundaries of your ministry. I've seen people who call me from London and say, Ah, I read this book, uh, 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 the, 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 the Nightmares of a Core Leader. How can I have it? Can I have 50 copies? I've seen people coming from all everywhere. How the book got to that place, I can't explain. Praise the Lord. Two, we have magazines. As a young church, even if you don't have money for books now, you can do a monthly magazine. Let your environment know what God is doing your ministry to do. Hello? Am I communicating? Then you have bulletins, you have tracts, and have letters. You have bulletins, you have tracts, and you have letters. Then number four, you have b-balls and flesh, flesh banners. A woman, a woman who is a medical doctor called me today. He said, ah, Papa, I flew into Abuja today. From the airport, I saw your banners and your flesh. I said, yes, we are rocking the, we are rocking the town. Hello? We are doing what? Big time. You can't come into Abuja without seeing us. Any major junction will see us position for what God will do. Help me tell somebody, let your voice be heard. The last publicity we did, I can't even, it's, it's so heavy. So heavy. About 4,000 handbills, 105 big banners, about 5,000 posters. What again did we do? Banners, flares, uh huh. The one on plank now. And the big banner on double on both sides. Powerful publicity. Powerful. And we saw the product in the meeting. It, it, the whole city gathered. Stop complaining, church is not growing. Nobody is seeing your face. They don't know you exist. You might carry anointing and the right word and the right character and the right integrity, and yet nothing is happening because they can't hear you, they can't see you. Up to now, a man, a man I brought, I brought that and prophesied. He said, you don't know where I am. I'm a chief judge. I returned from Kenya and I had it and I saw. I came to that meeting on Saturday. You brought me out. I have a gift for you. When are you coming back to Abuja? He said, you don't know what that prophet did in my life. He changed my life. So, so everything is not devil. There is something that simple wisdom should teach you. 
Am I communicating? That is why even in Omaha, my face should be here 24 hours. Because we didn't move from Omaha. So we did, can bear. People should not even know that I'm not in this city. Anywhere you enter from the gate, my banner should be there. Because you need to run what I call high visibility oppression for people to know that there is something. Listen to me. When you package all these things and project it, listen to me, it makes for believability. It makes for what? You have not said anything, baby. What? One lady can say, Papa, hmm, my friend said, even if this man is not a real prophet, but you see how handsome and how beautiful they are, I will come to their church. My face alone and Mama's face is bringing people to church. Oh, you've not seen the picture. The picture is too powerful. They will go, after something, they go to Mama. Mama, are you the one of that place? Mama said, eh, now. A woman said, she's just seeing your face and your wife's face. I am relaxed. I prophesy. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard. Lift up your head and shout glory. Anything that is worth doing should be done well. You don't know who you will attract by projecting what you do. I spoke so extensively yesterday about packaging. Did I? I talked so, ext- so elaborately on what? Packaging. What you present, what you project. You can't carry this thing and die a pauper. If you carry it, show it. Am I talking here? So we have bibles. So we have flesh banners. I will have stickers. If you, if you come and put it you will see Zionite for life. And you think all of them are coming to our church. Right? They are not coming there. But you knew, we knew what, what something we did. There is a young boy we, are, we appointed. I said, any car that comes to our church, <clears throat> you are becoming Zionite by fire. And the Bible said, wherever the source of your fish are match, I, I will give you as a possession. So some people are carrying a sticker, even though they are not our members, but I tell you by the what they will relocate. Because when the angel of the mandate of the sticker they are carrying will begin to worry them, they will relocate. And, you see, they don't even remove it because the thing is too beautiful. But if you remove it, a portion of your car will be defaced. Did you hear what I said? So I see, I see Zionite for life. What's for 2014? If you see the kind of things we are producing. From our, from our devotional, we give it to one of the best printers in this nation. If you see the devotional, but you feel like eating the devotional. Calendar, stickers, you'll be proud to be a Zionite by 2014. So do it. And all these things are not expensive. It's not something you should see that with little creativity you project it. Listen to me. Excellence attracts excellence. The kind of people you attract to your church is a representation of your inner personality. Am I talking here? Look at all my pastors. All of them are suited. You, you can't come to this church as my pastor. You are wearing safari. Who will relocate you to Obo. If you don't want me to post you to Obo, you better behave. So I say, I hear you. If I'm from Obo, sorry. But <laughs> so I say, I hear you. Amen. So, what are the requirements for effective media impact? What are the requirements for effective media impact? If God is leading you to go on radio, go on newspaper, whatever, either electronic or print, what are the requirements? It's something you need to see down and plan very well. It's not something you stumble into mistakenly. Say, I hear you. These are factors that must be clearly examined in order for you to have a profitable and impactful media outreach. And they are as follows. Number one, have a clear, affordable, and realistic budget. Have a clear, have a clear, affordable, and realistic budget. Can we say it? Can we say it again? This is the that I enter. I enter airports so that everybody, ah, prophet of God, they want to help me. I say, ah, and I want to wear the new me. But I knew that these people have not met them. But they have seen me in banners and what? 
and favor. It creates favor. It creates acceptance. Ah, this man, you already a star. So I hear you. Have what? A clear, affordable, and realistic budget. Sit there and say, okay. And it's always advisable to start from where you are. Okay? Don't have a ministry in, in, uh, in Abba and you are doing uh, television in Lagos or Abuja. They can't see you. It's better and more powerful that you start from the local stations. Where people can feel what you are doing and when grace increases, God will do what? Expand your horizon. So I hear you. So you need to sit down. The truth of the matter is media is capital intensive. What? Oh my God! Three months in a like three months in a in, in a in a in a station like AIT will run into millions. It will run into millions. So it's not something you just wake up one day and say I must be on television. Uh, no, no, no. If I tell you what media takes from this ministry, but it is breaking grounds for us. I go to places, people say, ah, that man is a man of God. I listen to your message. You know, it gives me a self, you know, a, a feeling of what? Self-satisfaction. So say, I hear you. So plan your budget as a pastor. After you have paid your tithe of tithe, and you don't have any project, just a mark. Start from the level you can carry. Don't say, ah, Prophet Doug is everywhere. No, no, no. Start from, I started with SCBN, and when God, you know, graced us the ball, I moved to Hosanna, now I've entered into Abuja. We are going to start from what? Reading uh, ITV. And from ITV we we'll enter into what? AIT. And so we we'll keep doing it. So you must have what? A realistic, affordable, and clear budget. Say I hear you. Number two. Identify your catchment area. Some have talked on that. Identify your catchment area. Do you want to start locally? nationally or what internationally but it's always advisable you know to start from where you are when you conquer where you are then you can launch out so i hear you we built on 104 for more than four years now love fm will be in fact i'm one of the oldest preachers at that station and it's bringing profound impact a, a, a young boy came here yesterday he said i listened to mama's message something happened to my life I and my family will be worshipping here this Sunday. And he came from Bano. Another man from Calabar, Mark and he said, man of God, I listened to, to your my wife's message. And on this and this and that. Can you give me more? And we, he put 10,000 something materials. And so one of these days, I'm going to come to the church. That's the power of media. Praise the Lord. That's what? There's a man carrying your blessing out there. You need to reach him for him for you to be reached. Am I communicating? So I hear you. I, 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 there is a man in America. I can't remember his name. One black guy. That man knows uh, the, the guy's name. He was preaching on television like this. On faith. On what God can do. And there was this man that has so much money. Has so much money. I'm forgetting that. I will ask mama. That has so much money. I was listening to this black American preacher. He was preaching you know, declaring hope and faith. And the man copied the name of the preacher on television, said an email, and said, I want to have a meeting in a five star hotel in Soso Place. And he came over with his barristers. He said, I've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. Few days from now, I will be gone. But I have willed all my money and my estate to your ministry and to the orphanage. Please take it. Seven days later, the man died. And how, how, that was how the man of God exploded. One man listened to him on television. One man listened to him on television. I want to say something here. There is somebody that wants to bless you, but you have connection problem. You have what? Connection. Stop crying. God cannot call you to frustrate you. If there is an assignment, then there is a consignment somewhere. But it is a word from your assignment that will provoke the release of the consignment. So I hear you. That was another black guy. I will remember his name. Became richer because of media. Someone said, oh Lord, grant me access to media. So I hear you. 
Number three, establish your target audience. Establish your target audience. From the packaging of your church, from the packaging of your message, what cadre of the society do you want to reach? Do you want to reach the elites, semi-literates, illiterates? It must be clearly defined. There are different kinds of ministry for different kinds of people. Praise the Lord. I find that I, I feel free when I am among people who are intelligent. And it takes me and nothing to produce. For you need to see me, I've been working on some things in my life. My finance, my delivery, my charisma, and my charm. Personal charm. You get what I'm saying? When I talk about charm, don't be automobile. For those of you who don't know, there is something I the charm is an aura. An aura that you cannot resist. Help you just build your personal charm. Some of you think you want to talk to you or, or Dibia. Now, Grandma, help me, my friend. Build up your personal charm. What is he saying? Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So, you need to determine your, from the flow of your ministry what kind of people have you been called? How, what kind of many people do you want to reach? The understanding of your target audience will now help you to be able to say, this is the kind of people that my ministry attracts. So I need to know the kind of media I will use to do what? Reach them. Am I teaching fine? Am I communicating? So I hear you. Number four. Ensure quality message content. This is where a lot of pastors have problems, or a lot of business people have problems. Ensure quality message content. Please don't go on air and shout on people's ears. There is somebody, leave back at over, fire! Somebody shout, hey! They are already into a long fire. Tell them how to come out of fire. Pastors, I hear what I'm saying here. Nobody will have, you have not laid a foundation, you've not said anything, and you're shouting fire. The stampede that happened in that place is fire. I have someone shouted fire, and they started running. You know the one that happened in Anambra, at the, the adoration ground. I heard that people were shouting fire. We didn't know whether it is never fire, matches fire, or holy ghost. And they died. Let people hear. See, that is why you are not yet qualified for media until you communicate revelation. People you are talking to, especially when you establish your target audience, you should have something. A message must minister to need. Your message must locate a need, and your message must address the need. That is why before you preach, you need to sit there and say, God, what is the need of this house and what word am I sending to them? Don't preach evangelistic type of message on radio. There are 27 people. God will say, Amen. Somebody say, Amen. A woman of Samaria enter and say, Amen. Speak by point by point. Become a teacher by force. You see, eh? I entered Abuja with my teaching ministry. You find that I'm doing more teaching now than preaching. If you watch me close, you, see, you will see that there is a change in my oppression. I entered into Abuja. If I do little teaching, the church will catch fire. My text message will come, Papa, hey! I said, eh. Hey. Now this one, they walk here. I relocate. So I hear you. Hear you. you know, my mad preacher. If I want to preach here and now, eh? I'll preach from here to hear my voice like that. But listen to me. There are people of intellect. There are people of developed minds. They are coming into your church not for you to shut them down. They want you to communicate principles. Aya. They want you to do what? Show them from the word of God what they can do and change their life. That is why many of them come, they don't return. Because the one they came, they didn't receive anything. Am I communicating? We have a pattern here for the benefit of this. I teach my pastors to do preach teach. Someone say preach teach. Say it again. 
that in the first 45 minutes, assuming you are given 45 minutes to discharge, that the first 15 minutes is what? You preach, you, you hot on the place. Then in the next 20 minutes, you change that. You know, we are waiting for you to say 12 ways to achieve this. 31 days to do this. Then you come to the temple and begin to take it point by point. So at the end of your ministration, if you ask them, what did you hear? He said, the man of God said, there are seven ways of becoming wealthy. Number one, he saw you see. They live, some, they live with something that is what? Tangible. If you keep on shouting, you will attract people who are demon possessed. Because when you shout, 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 they manifest. Yeah, it's a power is moving. The one falling on that seat doesn't have money to replace the seat. You didn't hear what I said. Did you hear what I said now? Should I say it again? The one breaking the seat, if you catch him and say, if you take his offering, 20 naira. My friend, do, do you want to die in ministry? No, let's go. Ah, the, ah, ah, you shout more. Ah, you go, come out! What is your name now? My name is Felicia. Are you from here? I am from Ikote, man. How many are you? You are 21. Every Sunday, people, bankers, lawyers, managers come to your church and you see that nonsense. You should have a specialized meeting, a specialized meeting where you handle such things. The Sunday service should be business driven service. The, the full glory of the service must be seen on a Sunday because there is no second time of correcting wrong impression. People form opinion of you. The first five minutes they enter your church. From the candor, from the ambience of the environment, then from the personality assessment of the pastor, and then from so many other things. That will now, fact, within the first five minutes, they have decided whether they will remain with you or relocate. That is why there should be no dumb members, sir. If you are a keyboard, don't look for key on the Sunday service. You know that offering is be, will be taken at this time. Don't do, 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 do. It's a sign of mediocrity. And lack of discipline. Because where they are coming from, before they start, the, the man that is taking the offer has finished, the music has started. How can you compete with churches that have well packaged oppression? And you are, you are, you are displaying mediocrity. And you record it and go on the radio. For so the radio will write a letter for you to not to come back again. Sometimes I hear you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mama. You are in spirit. The master name is Pastor Jamai Bright. You know him. He preached like Bishop T.D. Jakes. One black handsome. Jamai Bright. That was the guy that preached. And the man handed over a life uh, investment to him because of good preaching. Hello. I heard about uh, the man they called Dollar. What is his name now? Creflo Dollar. One guy has set the rope to hang himself. And immediately TBM brought in Creflo Dollars. He was, carrying, he was wearing a one powerful black, black suit and, you know, dressing powerfully. And was wearing a powerful golden Rolex watch. And the man has, you know, brought the thing that he will put his head into. And his eyes flashed to the, what the man is saying. He said, let me listen to this man after I will die. Did you hear what I said? That what? <laughs> let, me, let me listen to Creflo Dollar. After what? I will die. Okay. He carried his seat and sat down. And Creflo Dollar was preaching and preaching and preaching. And suddenly he saw the kind of Rolex watch a preacher was wearing. He said, wow. If God can give this preacher a Rolex watch, I refuse. I changed my mind. I won't die again. I immediately uh, called for altar call. He was the one to be one in his house. And the next Sunday, he came to church. Don't let those the power of media. It's so powerful. It affects people's psyche and psychology. Sometimes I hear you. So your message content. Don't go to air and talk rubbish. People are exposed. People listen. When they, when they come under you, they weigh you. Because it's not only the pastors they bypass as they, came to, as they were coming to your church. 
They saw other pastors, but they, because of what they had, please don't allow them to be disappointed. Any man that sits under you must be able to leave after you have spoken with one, two, three, five things to do to improve his life. So I hear you. Are you getting blessed? The message content. Very, very powerful. Yes, when preaching unction comes, uh, the more you mature in ministry, you, say, you begin to notice that God will begin to move you as into a teaching oppression. Some of us started with a raw preaching grace. It is good that we had it at the first of ministry. But now, I have entered into a fatherhood ministry where I talk to bishops and apostles so I shouldn't be shouting on them. Because the people you are talking, they even read the Bible better than you. You are preaching, they are following your theology. Am I talking here? They are following what? Your trend of what? Thought. If you saw, say Matthew 8, they will quote it before you open the Bible. How can you be preaching to people like that? Sometimes I hear you. Lay your hands upon your head. Close your eyes. Say, my father, after today, deepen the words of my revelation. In the name of Jesus! A man like Sabbath day, you look at him. There is no power to heal headache. Nobody falls under his ministry. But listen to me. Anytime you listen to him, he will fill you with nuggets on how to be an impactful leader. In fact, currently he finished a leadership seminar in his church that he brought this, uh, 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 not to conjure well. What, what is the other woman? That the husband is a redeemed pastor. Or be, as the question. Some important, prominent people. So talk and look. Affect people's mind. Let your words, you know, let your words permeate the words of their defense. That is why in Zion, in Zion, if you must be pastor here, then your mind will be sharpened. I believe, thank God for people that join up from where they are coming, but listen to me. This ministry has capacity to change your life because of the way we preach and teach. You know, many of times when I introduce me as prophet, I know that people have a misconception. So, so prophet, they expect me to say, there is somebody here. Your name is okay, okay, all you come out here. You are to but by the time I open the scripture and close, everybody is panting for grace. And from there, I operate my office and miracles are wrought. I pray for you today. Don't be a pastor without the word. Don't, you see, a pastor on the pulpit without the word of God is a pulpit. Your greatest discipline in life is to dig deep. Acts of the Apostles of the 6 verse 4. The Bible said, let us give ourselves to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the world. So, in media, you need to offer value. Help me tell somebody, offer value. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Never exaggerate. Never what? Exaggerate. Confirm your examples. Make sure that the things you are saying really happen. Number five. Connect with professionals. Connect with professionals or people with experience in the aspect of the media you want to employ. Sometimes I hear you. Sometimes I hear you. Sometimes I hear you. Connect with what? Connect with what? Professionals or what? People with what? Experience in the aspect of the media you want to employ. For example, before we entered into television, we sat extensively for this kind of light. Have you ever seen this kind of light anywhere in Omaha? This light was important. We spent billions of naira to get light. We will get this one and we will reject it. Because it, 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 we have not gotten the level of what uh, light we needed in the auditorium. Then we went to salvation ministry. We met some people in, in, in that ministry. I said, how do you people get that clear uh, uh, coverage? They showed us the man that imposed this light. And we, it took us, if you see this thing, it took us money. In fact, we carried, it was it a pickup. And now, see that day, we got a level. Then when he came to camera, I met some men of God, something like Dr. Eber Damina. He said, Prophet, we, there is, this one we use, we sell it, it is sold about 2.5 million, one camera, or 5 million. But there is another one you can use with little resource, resources, but you can get a clear one. And we got these ones. And it is as sharp as that one. Don't go on air and, dis and display mediocrity. Now, when it was time for sound, 
We call people. Come and configure our sound. So that our sound will be crispy. When I say praise the Lord, you will hear it very clearly. A whole lot of sound engineers came here, but finally, God sent us somebody that configured the sound. As I'm talking to you now, there is a kind of professional band we just bought now. They are coming back. Put your hands. One for here, one for Abuja. It's a seven piece drum. We are going to see it by tomorrow. It will feel here. Some will say, Excellence. Stop doing like a, you might have somebody. The world is moving. Don't be in the stone age. Don't be in the stone age. If not, you'll be a church left behind. You know what? Say it again. Say it again. Package your services. Now in Abuja, now we are doing our sound. We are doing our sound. We have not got into where we are going, but we will soon we'll get there. Praise the Lord. So all those things, you need to engage a professional who will give you what? An insight and advice on how to do these things. It will not be funny that you are on air and somebody look at you, they can't hear you. They hear, or the, the, the color of, can you see the picture? Is this not powerful? Very powerful, very sharp. I prophesy to you, as you leave here and go back to your ministry, the face of your ministry will change. I'm not hearing that even like a thunder. There are things I'm expecting from America, some sounds. Somebody here, the brother in America, promised me and he's going to bring it. So that we can equip this place very powerfully. I'm expecting some solid things. That are coming from America. So do you need this one? Do you do? I say yes, I need them. In this world of competition, you need to do what? Repackage and move forward. Don't settle in your status quo. If not, people will delete you. They'll do what? Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Now, what are the benefits of media? As a tool for the propagation of the world or for the release of the glory. What are the benefits? Are there some benefits that are to you when you enter into the media? One, it makes for wider coverage and circulation. The media makes for wider coverage and circulation. The media makes for wider coverage and circulation. If you want to experience the grace for wider coverage and circulation, then you need the media. Number two, quick and easy access to information concerning your ministry. You want the world to feel the impact of your ministry, it can be accessed through the media. Like your emails, your YouTubes, your Facebooks and all that. Am I communicating? Quick and what? Easy access to what? Information concerning your ministry. Number three, media amplifies the voice of your mandate. Media amplifies the voice of your mandate. Media amplifies the voice of your mandate. Do you want your voice to be heard? Do you want to cross beyond the boundaries of people who hear you? Then you need to engage the power of media. Praise the Lord. Between now and April, there are a lot of single people here who are going to get married. I see a lot of wedding and wedding celebrations. If you are a single lady in this house and you expect to be married by April, say your loudest amen. amen. And single pastors, you want to get hooked and married by April, say your loudest amen. amen. That is grace for connection in this house. So say, I hear you. So it has power to connect you to your... Okay, number five. It has power to connect you to your destiny helpers. Can we say that? I'm not hearing. Can we say that it has power to connect you to your word, destiny, helpers, and burden sharers? I told us the story of Pastor Jeremiah Brandt. That was why. That was how he stumbled into a life-changing fortune 
because he was positioned aright and he connected to the man that have the wherewithal to change the face of his ministry. Are you still with me? Number what now? Number six. Okay, number five. It creates positive image for your ministry. Media creates positive image for your ministry. Media creates positive image. It, it, it makes you to gain acceptance. It makes people to receive your ministry. When they listen to you, listen to you, listen to you again and again, they will make up their mind concerning you. And if you preach well, then you can be able to dislodge their argument by the superiority of your delivery. Hello. Am I talking here? So, it, it, you see, media is powerful. You see media? Ha. Media is what? Do you know that some of those things you read in newspaper are information that have been tutored? Hello. Most times it's not the real information. But because the government or somebody is sponsoring it, so it is fashioned in a way it can change people's opinion. I'm not talking to somebody here. Haven't you seen a man you know that is so bad, but if they give him po polish in the newspaper, you see him as an angel. You see him as what? But you know that the man is next door neighbor. In fact, you knew what he did yesterday. But you come and see the right top of the newspaper. In fact, you even begin to doubt us. Are you sure this is my neighbor? Yeah. From what I have written and from what I know, there is what a contrast. Am I communicating? So don't underestimate what the power of media. It has power to create the right image and bring you to the right people. Say amen. amen. I'm not hearing. Say amen. amen. Number what now? Media has the ability to communicate God's presence and glory to people's lives and homes in order for their needs to be met. Media equally has the ability to communicate God's presence and glory to people's lives and homes in order for their needs to be met. I've seen ministers Preaching, yeah. uh, one certain time I, I, I was here, okay, I was on SCB preaching, and some Hausa people listen. You remember when Hausa people came here? How many those Hausa people that came? You remember that testimony? I was preaching on SCBN, and God wrote a miracle where all of them gathered to watch me. What, where was that? I is Zamfara. I won't go Zamfara, God forbid. They came to invite me for City White Crusade. But because of uh, Boko Haram and all some of those things, and God didn't God didn't send me equally. <laughs> so I hear you. I, I just prayed for them and told them I will come. But the testimony is this: they were gathered in the place in Zafra watching me, and God healed somebody. And they said, "No, if we watch him on television, and power was able to be, let us come and see him." So media is powerful. Media is very, very powerful. You can, you, a, a, a rich man can have cancer dying. Every man has prayed and nothing happened. And suddenly they brought you in around 5 p.m. to minister for 30 minutes. And you said all the things you said. I said, now if you are sick, I pray the power of God right now. Lay your hands. And you pray through the airwaves and the person gets healed. I tell you, that 5,000 cathedral, the man will build it. You see, I've known something about God that it doesn't take God anything to bless a man. If you are living this, God, just know that God can help you. Beyond your special prayer and fasting, God can break protocol to do what? But you, before that comes, you need to do the right. Start to tell somebody, do the right thing. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Seven. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Seven, media enhances church growth and ministry visibility in your place of location. Media enhances church growth and ministry visibility in your place of location. Media can be a veritable tool in the school of church growth. 
You want more people to come, let more people hear you. You want more people to see you, let, let more people hear you. Am I communicating? And nothing announces the, 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 the manifest presence of a man in a city than the media. So I want you to know that with media, you can be able to project your glory. With media, the earth can feel the impact of your fire. I don't know who God is preparing to enter into media, and thank God you are here today. So you hear some of these things. Because I know that God said, talk about media and glory. Because there are some of you here, you, are, you want to go into radio. Am I talking here? Is this message not, is it not important? I know some of you want to, you want to be heard. Possibly by next year, you want to go into media, television and all that. So it's pertinent that I share along this line, and the Lord bless you. We, at this juncture, I want to bring this meeting, this preaching to an end. Put your hands together for the Lord. If you enjoy it, clap your hands and make some noise. Hallelujah. Feel free. Anything about ministry. Anything about ministry. Or how you can improve your life. Anything you want to ask, please, please feel free to ask the question and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have the first question. The first question says, please sir, I want to know the difference the difference between seeking the difference between seeking or allowing the will of God to come to pass and making and making a choice. The first question says, please sir, I want to know the difference between seeking or allowing the will of God to come to pass and then making a choice. The difference between allowing the will of God to come to pass and making a choice. Um, to answer this question, when we want to make a choice, it is important that we allow God's will concerning a particular issue to prevail. So, just like Papa said about glory ambassadors um, in the first session today, he said, a glory ambassador is dead to his own will. Praise the Lord. So, it is not just about your will, it is about his will. But even though it is his will, you are still the one who is going to make a choice. Praise the Lord. Now, even though it is his will, he would tell you this is what i want of you but you are still the one that will make a move assuming you let's uh okay thank you let's try to uh, fix this in the area of marriage assuming god speaks to you expressly that this is your wife to be or this is uh, okay assuming this is your wife to be and then you decide in your heart well i don't really like this person i don't really want to I, I don't really want a fair person. I want a dark person. And then, because you feel you don't want it, but God has already told you this is the person. If you don't go to the person, it is still not a choice. To make a choice, you have to walk up to the person and tell the person your own intentions. Praise the Lord. So, even though it is your choice, you have to, to make the decision by yourself. It is important that you allow God's will to direct you. It is important that you allow God to direct you through His will. Um... There is just a thin difference between these two. God will show you His will, but it is still left for you to m make up your mind and take a decision towards it. Praise the Lord. So the fact that we say you have to make a choice, you have to make a decision, does not mean that God's will is away from it. As glory ambassadors, it is no longer our will, but His will. So when we make our choice, it is not just our own choice, it is the choice of Him who has centers because the bible says we have the mind of christ praise the lord so when you have the mind of christ and you're making a choice it's not just about your own choice it's about what god has put place inside of your heart jesus said in john chapter 5 verse 19 he said he has no will of his own as the father does that is how he he does what he's doing so when he see whatever he sees the father do he is also doing it in accordance to what the father is doing but we will say jesus went about doing good he went about doing good because god it was in god's will for him to do good and he too made a choice to now do it in accordance to god's will another uh, example when he was at the uh, at the garden of gethsemane it was not his choice to die do you understand? It was not his choice to die, but because it was the will of the Father, he had to choose to make up his mind. 
at the time the cup was too heavy for him. He said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. But even on top of that, he had to allow the will of the father to prevail. And because of that, he was able to make a choice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another question. Said, Please, is there any difference between diseases and affliction concerted by someone through spiritual or satanic means? And the one contacted through natural means. He said, is there an, any difference between diseases and affliction contacted by someone through spiritual or satanic means and the one contacted through natural means? Praise the Lord. There is a difference. Hallelujah. There is a difference. But we know that the source of every negative thing is the devil. Hallelujah. So a disease or a sickness can be contacted through, neg- through natural means. But there is still a source. And the major source of everything evil is the devil. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 17 that every good and perfect gift comes from God. But So it, it also tells us that every negative gift, everything that, that, that does not make us happy, everything that causes us affliction and pain also comes from the devil. But the truth of the matter is that some are... Uh, are perpetrated through demons but some can also come through natural means but Satan is the source of every negative thing now the second question do both undergo the same process of healing anointing takes care of both the natural ones and the spiritual ones praise the Lord hallelujah praise the Lord and um, when, we, when we say drugs drugs might take care of the natural ones but the ones perpetrated by demons will hardly be taken care of by drugs. We always see this when we say somebody was taken to the hospital, taken to that hospital, taken for that surgery, and yet no solution. And then just by the word of power, by laying of hands, the person gets him or herself. We see that this one has a demonic source. And the source is spiritual in nature. So it also needs a spiritual approach. Because you cannot use just physical drugs to treat a spiritual kind of problem. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please bring the questions you have already. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, Papa, I want to ask this question. There's a story told. There was a man who was sitting under his father, under ministry. He was doing good under his father's ministry. Now, a time came that he had a little problem. His wife was in labor, in hospital. So he didn't have money to run all his about. He went to his father to uh, beg him for money. His father was preaching to him that day, even the blind see and the lame walk. According to how Jesus, you know, preached to John the Baptist when he was a... Um, so he didn't understand it. He went back. Later, later, maybe after a week, he still went back to his father to apologize to him. His father told him he, 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 that there is a thought he has for him, a thought of good, not of evil, to bring him to an expected end. So on him, he didn't still understand what his father, father was telling him. Now, on his own annoyance, he went and said a little plot of land he has and buried his wife in hospital. Then after his wife told him that, after all, most of the miracles that happen in the church, you are the one that draws it. After the income, everything that comes to the church is through you, the miracle you do that comes. Let us open up our own ministry and do this thing, and I believe we can get money through it. Now, they open up their own ministry. Along the line, maybe they draw most of the members from the church of his father. And in the course of two years, he was doing well. Now, after two years, everything starts going back to Everybody, the members now, we are going back to his father. Everybody, we are dislocated from his church. He got confused. Now he entered into the mood of praying, asking God the meaning of this and what he's doing. Then the spirit directed he should go back to his father and apologize to his father for what he did. Now on his own, he feel that it's somehow difficult for him to go back to his father and apologize. After a while, the thing continued persisting him. So he later... Okay, sorry daddy. Then what happened finally? What's the question? Okay, my question is that along the line, he let her die. He didn't finish up his ministry. I want to know, at this juncture, at this place now, is it, is, is it like something like a sin to him because his ministry is supposed to have gone the But due to his deaf ears and every other thing, he died along the way. You know, 
what uh, my confusion was, somebody was talking about Samson. Some people said that, that, that the sports Samson died where his ministry ended. And that how God planned him to end. That's that how God planned his for his ministry to die. So I was arguing with that person. So I remember this question. I wanted a little clarification from it. Well, um, let me start. Uh, the, the senior pastor quoting scripture to a man that needed help is out of context. But if there was no money, you should have opened up to him and said there is no money. But let us trust God. But if the pastor had the money and this is his associate and there was a genuine need, I believe he should have helped him out. But that notwithstanding, the worst thing a pastor can do in life is to start a ministry and welcome God into it. Did you hear what I said? To do what? Don't ever leave your father without his blessing. Don't, no matter the provocation. If you must start a new work, you must get blessing. Scripture showed us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 how to live an existing environment. You must get the blessing. Paul and Barnabas we are prayed for. Hands we are laid on them. And the apostles send them forth. And they went and they blossomed. So, the man made a fatal mistake. You know, I was teaching the, the Abuja church on my pastor and you. I said, there are kinds of pastors. This one falls into self-ambitious pastor. Because of an identified gift, people begin to tell you, ah, hmm, the way you are seeing, you know, you don't see past your spiritual father. Why don't you start your own ministry? I will support. To your greatest surprise, you will see, they will follow you momentarily, but when the heat comes, they will relocate. Hello. You know, if a leaf, if a leaf falls off from the tree, it remains green for some time. But after some time, it will dry. So any man that breaks away and he looks as if he's doing well, give him time. Because whatsoever you sow, that you, you see, it's a law that cannot be broken. If you break a man's ministry and broke his heart, you might be doing what you are doing. People are clapping, you have been manifest, even building churches. But the day that church will crumble, you will cry. You will come to church one day and you won't see anybody. Of course, the harvest is bigger than what? The seed. So if you are a pastor here, there are ways to leave a ministry. Especially if God is leading you. And if God is leading you, it will be a known thing in the heart of your father and in your own heart. For you to leave a ministry shouldn't be by accident. Then, that the man died now, I can't really place that. Even though rebellion can kill a man. But I can't actually say what killed him. Huh? The end point of rebellion is execution too. So, but be that at his may, please. I want to encourage everyone here. Especially associate pastors. Anytime you feel that God is leading you to start a walk. Talk to your senior pastor. Pray about it. I mean, if you leave a church like Zion, I should be able to trust you in one of my conventions and say, my son here, come and preach. We still have what? Relationship. Not when you leave me. We can't talk. We can't call on phone. If I see you, I, I put my face like this. Because you left me. You broke my heart. But there is a way you can still leave your senior pastor anywhere he goes. He can even be traveling abroad and say, hey, come, follow me and do what? Travel abroad. Ministry can be better at that level. So, sir, I hear you. Praise the Lord. To so also add to what Papa has said, um, the senior pastor quoting scriptures is not um, right. He would have just come up front and explained things to him. Fatherhood is not sponsorship. Fatherhood is not sponsorship. We have fathers and we have mentors. And we don't go to fathers to beg for money. Fathers impact the blessing, not money. There is a kind of money you will collect and you terminate your ministry prematurely. When Oyedepo went to Bishop, Archbishop Benson Dahosa, Archbishop Benson Dahosa told him, there is money in that briefcase. Take it. He said, no, he's not going to take it. That he came for something different from money. And the challenge that we have as Igbos is this money problem. Every 
problem that ministers in Igbo land has ever had. Watch it. It has always been centered around money. It's either they're not paying you well where you are, or either you decided to manipulate things in order to get extra money, or either you decided to give you prophetic pressure just to bring money out of their pocket, or that you got angry that somebody was supposed to give you money and the person... Our problem is usually centered around money. It is, it is, it is, it is uh, jokingly said that if you want to be sure that an Igbo man has really died, just bring money, coins, and shake it around his ears. Did I manufacture that? Have you heard it before? If you have heard it, just wave your hands. I am not the one who manufactured They said, if you want to know if an Igbo man is really dead, just shake money around. Money is not everything. So if we, we are in that condition, and then the person comes, We'll let the person know. See, one thing you must know. If it was sickness, hospital, maybe the person was hospitalized, an emergency, I can understand. But for, for you to take money to deliver your child from, uh, your wife from uh, delivery room in the hospital that your wife just delivered, you need money to go and bring, it is a serious act of irresponsibility. That pregnancy is not an emergency. That pregnancy gave you nine months notice. Nine, how many months notice? Nine months notice. Any man that goes to beg for money to bring his wife out of hospital is an irresponsible man. Quote me anywhere. Quote me anywhere. Delivery is not an emergency. Nine months notice. One day you saw a wife throwing up. The next day you saw her vomiting. You saw, the next day you saw her body changing. The next tomorrow you saw her somehow getting big. You were feeling the baby and you were not making plans. Ha! Why not go and do laborer work? Let God see your sincerity. Let God see that you are responsible. And let him open up ways for you. You are bringing a baby into this world. And you cannot be responsible enough to provide for the hospital at least. That is an act of irresponsibility. And the Bible supports me by saying that anyone who cannot provide for his household is worse than an infidel. Sell your shoes, sell your coats, sell anything you see valuable, but deliver that woman from the hospital. She is your wife, and that baby, both of you planned for it. Praise the Lord. So, him going to the senior pastor to beg for money, and then the senior pastor said no, shouldn't get him angry. He should make him realize himself. I, I, I should have done this better. I should have planned myself. Even if it was saving one thousand naira every week. How many weeks are in one month? Between four and five. Assuming it's only four. Four times nine is how much? Thirty-six thousand. It can bring that woman out of the hospital comfortably. FMC is about eighteen thousand naira to twenty thousand naira. I will not be so. You even have sixteen thousand naira change. To buy the first meal before people start visiting. You won't be waiting. Hmm. Those church members, have they come? There's no meal. Go wait. They will soon come. It is an act of irresponsibility. Quote yeah. me anywhere. So, delivery. That one I understand. It's not an emergency. But assume it's maybe you, you were in the, at work. And just came back one day. And you saw your child lying down. And had to... Ha, uh, there was a need for emergency surgery. That I understand. is an emergency. And at such times you can be helped. But please... Don't go to anybody. Don't har embarrass yourself. And don't come to us. Nine months is not an emergency. Save your salary. Go hungry. Eat nothing. But let that baby come out. It is not wickedness. It is what we call planning. And the Bible says a man who cannot take care of his household is worse than an infidel. Please don't pity the person. Don't allow your emotion to take a better hold of reality. This is reality. Hallelujah. This is a man taking responsibility and I believe that if that lady had seen in the future that by the time she has delivered that the husband will leave her in the hospital for extra days while hopping around to look for money to, to bail her, she would say no to so that his wonderful mouth when he was saying um, I love you, I want to marry you praise the Lord this one does not follow praise the Lord Dr. Paul and I quote him he said any man who at his wife's delivery does not have enough money at least to bring her out from the hospital. He said that that man needs two hefty men to hold him in his right in the his hand, two, another two at his leg. And then, he said 36, bullarization. That's how he called it. Bullarization. 
36 strokes. The best is only 12. That 12 is too small. Praise the Lord. So it is an act of irresponsibility. Him getting angry is also a problem. Hallelujah. He shouldn't be getting angry in such things. And then number two, um, leaving a church. I, I listened to his story. He said that the wife told him that after all, he is the one that has been bringing in testimonies, bringing in the breakthroughs, bringing in everything. But he could not bring in his life. Something as small as he, his own life. Oh, we're not talking of the people. What happened? What changed? It is stupidity for Joshua to think that his success in the battle between Israel and the Amalekites was his energy. It was not about his fighting skill. It was not about his expertise. It was about the hands of somebody who was lifted. The Bible said as soon as those lifted hands came down, they started losing the battle. Even Joshua, with all his fighting skills, with all his rehearsals, with all the army he went to, as long as this man's hands were down, he lost. And they had to support the hand. So Joshua's in the field. Don't think that the miracles is your power. It is because somebody's hand is lifted for you. By the time your father tells you, go and pray for my uh, uh, member. Go and pray for that sister. I cannot go as general overseer because of the big responsibilities on my shoulders. But I am sending you go and you go and things happen. Please don't kill yourself prematurely. Remember that somebody has sent you. Papa preached the message, the force of the sent word. It is commonly said in Igbo land. Do you understand that? If your father sends you to go and steal, when you get to the door, you don't, you don't, you don't try to break, uh, open the door. You, you use your leg to break open the door. Because somebody has sent you. When the man was blind, Jesus said, go to the pool, steal one. He went on the, on, 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 on the wings. Of, of the spoken word because somebody had told Jesus had told him to go and he knew that by going everything was going to happen Jesus saw ten lepers instead of praying for them he said go go and show yourself to the priest that was the force of the sent word and please who sends you on a journey matters who sends you into ministry matters who tells you because Papa would always tell us that when God sends you into ministry he pays your bills the Bible said in, in, in the book of Jonah and Jonah decided to go to Tashish and he paid his fares. He paid it because he sent himself. For Nineveh, there was no he wouldn't have paid anything. He would have just gone on that journey. But he put, he, 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 because he was going to Tashish, he sent himself. And because of that, he paid the bills. Praise the Lord. So, whatever, whatever, whether he was getting the miracles and the testimonies was because he was under somebody. If he was getting all that miracle, his life should have been a miracle he, he would have held on to. His life, at least, if he was to see into the future. And he would, he would rather not do any miracles in his life and live a long life. And stay with that baby. The baby would have been two years from the story by the time he died. That is not God's intention. Number three, he said something. He said that Samson, that they, they, they were arguing with somebody, that Samson said, that they said that Samson, um, that was how God had planned Samson to end his life. It is a lie. It is not true. That was not God's plan. Papa would always tell us that man has been created as a free moral agent. And because we are a free moral agent, God also is a gentle man. He would not want to impose his will on us. He allows us. Somebody asked the question, why did God not remove the tree of good and evil from the garden? Why did he not remove the tree of of, uh, knowledge of good and evil? Why did he leave it there and then allow Adam and Eve to eat of it? Because God allows us to make choices. Everything about our life is choice. That he gave us a ministry like this. And then we decided to decorate it with lilac and purple. It's not God's choice. It is our choice. That we decided to buy flowers like this. is our choice. Do you understand? God does not impose his own will on you. You decide how you make ministry. If God has called into ministry, you will decide. If you go the short uh, run or if you go with long run. You decide if you want to terminate ministry today or if you want to build something that will last. The Bible said about two men. Who built it? Who, who, nobody forced them to build where they built it. But one decided to build on sand. The other decided to build on rock. So life is how you make it. 
God has his plans, he has his purposes, but you decide how it will be. If Samson had not been messing up with the last of Delilah, he wouldn't have ended up where he ended. If he had, not, if he had lived his life the way, the way he was supposed to live it, he wouldn't have had that ending. Talking about Jacob and Esau, somebody will ask, why was Esau hated from the time that he was born, before he was born? Why would God say, I love Jacob and I hate Esau? God knew the disposition of Esau. Was it God that told him to sell his birthright for a meal? Was it God that told him? It wasn't God. He made his own choices. But one day came, he discovered that his choices had ruined him. The Bible said he, gave, he, he married two wives that were a pain in the neck to his parents. When he saw that Jacob, his brother, had remarried Canaanite, uh, Israelite women, he now went back to home and married an extra wife, just to be on the right. That was the point. Esau started making amends for his life. A day came in the life of Esau. I will not go into that because I'm not really preaching. A day came in the life of Esau when his brother came to appease him with gifts, with, 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 with cattle, with oxen, with different things that he brought. And Esau opened his mouth and said, I have enough. Esau, who appeared as if there was nothing that was going to happen in his life, he said what? I have enough. Esau was in a state of well-being. He was not poor. He was not challenged. Even though God said, I love Jacob and I hate Esau, Esau did not die poor. He did not end because the, Bible, the, the father said when he was uh, giving him a blessing, he said, when thou hast no, become restless, then thou shalt have dominion. So he knew that if he must have dominion like his brother, he has to become restless. He has to do something extra. And that was how he did what he did. And his life changed. Praise the Lord. Nineveh, God had proclaimed that Nineveh would be destroyed. But the people of Nineveh went on their knees and begged God. And the Bible said God repented of his action, his decision towards Nineveh. So please, if you see frustration in life, don't fold your hands and say, eh, God, maybe I am one of those who God has condemned for poverty. It is a lie from the pit of hell. Rise up from that situation. Make different decisions and then turn things around. Papa would always tell us that it is only a fool that makes the same decisions over and over again and expects a different result. Somebody shout hallelujah. So for that particular case, this is, these are the few things I said. Let me just bring out from, those, from that um, from that story, I, I believe God has blessed us, adding to what Papa has said. You can clap better than that. Or I will give you this microphone to answer one question. Hallelujah. The next question, the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Why is it that when God uses his servants to, to give prophecy, they give you date and later it does not happen? There are several reasons why it might not happen. Papa can give us some of them. Well, I, I have, maybe after this service, go and buy reasons why prophecy tarry. Praise the Lord. You see, if I come to you now and I prophesy to you that by April you are going to get married and you, 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 know, you go out and carry your boyfriend and you are committing all manner of uh, 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 all manner of what? Iniquity. Listen to me. April will come and pass. And you remain where you are. God said, my people will stay in the land of Egypt 400 years. But they left there how many years? 400 times. So is God a liar? Is God a liar? He said 400. So can you say that his prophecy failed? So it is what you do that it means how speedily prophecy comes to pass. So each time God gives a prophetic word, you need to work it out. At times too, you need to engage the force of prayer. Because some prophecies can be hijacked. Like Daniel's own. That was why Paul told Timothy 1, 1 Timothy 1, 18, that that might just warfare with the prophecy that has gone ahead of you. Prophecies are not instruments of decoration. They are instruments of word warfare. So a whole lot of things can contribute to that. But the truth is still... You, Exactly. By inquiry. So you need to sit down and inquire and say, God, at this juncture, what shall I do to break out of it? But I prophesy to you, every prophecy that is hanging, before this uh, conference is over, it will manifest. 
Praise the Lord. So Papa has given us several reasons. Your lifestyle can delay your prophecy. Your, your lack of worrying with the prophecy can also delay the prophecy. Praise the Lord. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. He said, And I, Daniel, understood by books. It's possible they will have remained in that captivity. But because Daniel did not, Daniel had to read. He had to understand. What if there were no Daniels in those days? This captivity would have lasted more than 70 years. Praise the Lord. So please, how do you flow continually on the prophetic grace and manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? How he flows? He just taught it um, on the first day two, first session, an encounter with the glory. Buy it and you understand exactly how he flows through them all. Praise the Lord. How many of us were here day two, first session? You remember when he talked on an encounter with the glory? Unquenchable hunger, thirst. Uh, undivided flow uh, uh, in, uh, dwelling in the presence all of that, that's what makes him praise the Lord what do you do to stop people from leaving the church people cannot stop leaving the church yeah, even Jesus church, Jesus church people left yeah. the Bible says one day Jesus came out and he said you, you, you eat my flesh and drink my blood and that day 5,000 members left and he turned to his disciples like this one see, and said, you boo, are you also going to leave? The disciples turned and said, where are we going to leave? Because you are the one with the eternal, word of eternal life. Where, where else can we go? Praise the Lord. So talking about believing, they would always leave the church. And they would always come to church. Praise the Lord. Just like a barrack. Soldier come, soldier go. But the truth of the matter is that we have to minimize the, the number of people leaving the church. Hallelujah. We need to learn how to close the back door of our ministry. And that is, uh, that might be for so far next year. Praise the Lord. But there are a few ways. Hospitality, treat people well. Understand them. Have a lively service. Don't love and care. Um, have good sound. Um, don't allow people the way you are enjoying AC. Uh, hey, some people, some churches you might go, the roof is too low, the sun is too scorching, and I'm telling them things will be better. But there is already a place where the thing is happening better. They might want to just go there. And if you are screaming on the microphone, your microphone is doing fee, 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 they might not hear. And they might decide not to have ear trouble at a very young age. So they might decide to relocate to a church that has a um, hallelujah sound, that kind of. Sound. Praise the Lord. So there are several reasons why people might leave the church. Praise the Lord. But that will be, maybe so far next year, Papa will be teaching on, on that. Hallelujah. He said that God should establish, is this a prayer point? Okay, please, return this prayer point. Thank you. Please, sir, does the church support arranging marriage? <laughs> if yes, does God support this? <laughs> it depends on what you call arranging marriage well I I did you hear me I didn't say the bible no, or God I don't support arranging marriage praise the Lord because most times arranging marriage um, is based on recommendation when we say arranging marriage it's based on recommended marriage somebody might recommend somebody because the person appears to be nice but someone who appears to be nice might not eventually be nice. And then the person might be nice, but the person who he or she is going to meet might make a bad person out of the person. Yeah. Papa would always tell us that in every man there is a king and there is a beast. Yeah. And in every woman there is a queen and there is a serpent. So depending on how you treat a woman or your husband, that will determine what the person will eventually become. I'm like this because Papa gave me all the love and support that he can give. And that is why I'm a happy wife, I'm a happy woman. Do you understand? But some other person would have married me and made a mess out of me. Whenever you see me, I'll become a serpent looking for who to sting. Because all that has been imputed into me is bitterness. Maybe the person has been slapping me, breaking my head, making me uncomfortable, giving me depression, and then eventually saying that I'm mad. I didn't mention anybody's name, but um, some of those things. Because you, somebody cannot be mad unnecessarily. Something, one or two places might just eventually make the person to be like that. Hallelujah. So, in, in every man, there is also a king and there is a beast. Abigail talks to, brought out the king in David with the way she spoke. 
and because of that, David didn't mind all the other women in the house, including Micah, that when he's through with dancing, she will look at him and say, mm, see how the king of Israel embarrassed himself today. He went to look for Abigail, who would speak to him like a king. And because of that, he also treated her like a queen. So, arranging marriage, well, I won't say I support it, and I won't say what the Bible says about it. In the Old Testament times, people were recommended, like um, Abraham recommended a particular family for his wife. Beautiful. Papa said, even when it is recommended, it is it's still left for you to receive the conviction that this is God's will, and then go ahead to work out the marriage, because no good marriage is wished. Every good marriage must be worked out, irrespective of how good the person is. There are two good people that cannot live in one house. Yeah. There are two good people, two born again, brother and sister, tongue speaking, Holy Ghost field, that cannot still live in the same house. Because of their temperaments, so many things are involved. So talking about arranging marriage, it is better that you are convinced. And um, talking about if God supports it, let me tell you what happened in Genesis. God arranged wife for Adam. Did you remember? He arranged Eve and brought to Adam. And the day Adam sinned, God said, where are you? He said, wait, oh, wait, oh, before you start spitting fire, it is the woman that you gave me. After that day, God said, okay, he who findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtain a favor. So, find, go and find her. When you find her, hey, come, I will give you favor. Praise the Lord. So, I didn't say yes, I didn't say no, but it's left for you to work it out. Thank you for the encouragement now. Hallelujah. Another question, if somebody has the call and many men and women of God has confirmed it, how can that person start to hear from God and be sure is the voice of God? Papa said EBI, me I'm saying, there's a book at the bookshop, by How to Understand the Voice of God, written by Prophet Okudeli Ezra. You will know exactly how. Praise the Lord. Since we have a book, I shouldn't dwell on that, should we? Should we? The book will answer everything because we have plenty of questions. How can a Christian develop? But please, before, before I, I go over, for that person who asks this question, um, when you know you have a call, please don't rush out and start a church. Find out from God what He wants you to do. From the, when God calls you, there are three kinds of calling. There is the general call, Matthew 28, verse 20. Go into the world and preach the gospel. That's its great commission. Everybody here is called. Everybody on the street is called. Because we are all meant to preach the gospel. The second one we call the... The... Um, what's it called again? The special call. The special call is the fivefold ministry. Ephesians 4 verse 11. And to some he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, teach, uh, pastors and teachers. And then there is this other call we call the specific call. See, you might be a pastor or an apostle, but it's important for you to know to who are you called. Because if you carry God's calling to a wrong people, they will frustrate the grace of God upon your life. Praise the Lord. The ministry that Jonah had can never flourish in Tashish. Yeah. The ministry that Jonah had could only flourish in Nineveh. Mm. It is important that you understand your place, because when you miss your place, you will be misplaced in life. If you miss your location in ministry, you will never receive your allocation. So it is important that you understand where God has placed you, so you'll be able to know what you are supposed to do. Then, now, if, if, if you are called as an apostle, Paul said in Galatians 2 verse 7, he said, I, ha I have been called as an apostle to the Gentiles. And my brother, Peter, has been called as an apostle to the Jews. So it's important that you understand who are you called to. Because the people you are called to will accept you. And who you are not called to will never accept you. So please understand. And when the time comes in Acts chapter 13, Papa, I think Papa preached a, a, a read that scripture in the course of this hospital, the Holy Spirit will release you. And when He wants to release you, if you are serving under somebody, He will talk to your spiritual father. Praise the Lord. He will give him a witness. Even if he does not talk to him expressly, when you come to him, he will give him a witness in his heart that it is time for you to be released. Praise the Lord. How can a Christian develop his or her spiritual gift? There are several ways to develop spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. To develop a spiritual gift, number one, you have to have an in-depth fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Because you cannot develop... You, Papa would always tell us that you cannot use the devil's weapon 
to fight last battles. Hallelujah. So if you must develop a spiritual gift, you also need the, spirit, the source of every spiritual thing to be able to help you to develop it. So the presence of God is important. Prayer is very, very important. The study of the word. Understood it does that. Yes, understand or the study those who are already operating in that gift. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. So there is need for you to um, dwell in His presence, study the Bible, pray as much as you can, uh, and then understand those who are also operating in the same gift. Praise the Lord. Are you getting blessed at all? Are your questions being answered? Hallelujah. Is ministry all about church? No. If no, how can I identify mine and make impact for people to be blessed? In the house of God, we have the ministry of helps. We have the pulpit ministry. And all of them are ministries. And there is no one that is higher than the other. Because for everyone who is called, God gives us grace according to our several abilities. Praise the Lord. In Matthew chapter 25, God speak, uh, Jesus speaking, He said, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who was about to take on, 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 a, on a journey. And then, before he left, he, gave, he called his servants and gave them different talents according to their several abilities. One thing you must know is that God will never give you anything that is bigger than you. In, in, in Proverbs 16 verse 2, the Bible says, God weighs spirits. So if God weighs spirits, it means that spirits are in sizes. Praise the Lord. We are trying to rush so that we can go. Are you understanding me? If God weighs spirit, it means that spirits are in sizes. So if spirits are in sizes, it means that our size of spirits are not the same. That is why when somebody goes to carry something that is heavier than him spiritually, the person dies prematurely. It is not every man of God that was called to start a, a, a fresh work. Some we are called to support other existing ministries, while some we are called to do a groundbreaking work. And it is, it is all about the different sizes in the spirit, because not everybody's size is the same. So, just like the question, just like the question says, um, how you can identify yours, it is important that you dwell in God's presence and find out from God. Alternatively, there is still something, there is something in the house of God that you love to do. Please, start from somewhere. Start doing it. As you do it, you see that you gain satisfaction. There are people who naturally like to sweep. So when they come into the house of God, what do they do? They join the sanctuary department. Hallelujah. There are some people who are very happy and satisfied when they sing. You join the singing ministry. There are different ministries in the house of God. There is the royal theater, that is the drama group. You could join the drama group. Depending on your area, on what keeps you satisfied in the house of God. Some like smiling at people. Please comfortably join the ushering department. Some like uh, the, or the greeters. Hallelujah. So depending on your own area, on what you love to do, please join a, um, a particular ministry. And then from there, and please you must remember that ministry is progressive. In, in life and in ministry, it is progressive. You might start out as an usher boy, but one day God will make you a general overseer. Yeah. You might start out as a, uh, like in the Bible, we saw Philip. Who was a deacon in the church, but one day he became an evangelist. Praise the Lord. So the, the ministry is progressive. Stephen was also a deacon, but Stephen eventually became an evangelist before his martyrdom. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, though. Should I stop here? Hallelujah. Please help us on this issue of administration. What is the best way... What is the best way to pay your branch pastors? Is it percentage or to place them on salary? Ah, office talk. Oh. Yes. Praise the Lord. The 1,000 does not cover this one. 1,000 registration for so far does not cover this one. Hallelujah. Number two, what is the best way to run the financial administration of a branch church? Please, office. Hallelujah. Amen. What are the processes to identify the specification of one's calling. I think we were trying to answer a question like that. Just um, ask God. He will help you unravel it. But until he does, find a place to serve in his house. Do you know, just like the way we have come to Sospa, there is no way this Sospa can end without some people identifying what God has called them to do. Yeah. It might come while he is preaching and speaking, and then something jumps in your heart. 
You might come while you go back home. You are tired. You are worn out. You lie down to uh, uh, pray. You lie down to pray as, as you were just about to pray. God hits an idea into your mind. God speaks to you. Even because of so far, the word of knowledge can flow. And the, and the word of wisdom can flow. And God can unravel your, mini, your ministry. Praise the Lord. So there are different process, uh, processes to identify the specification of one's calling. The next question, how can one develop the spiritual content and component to become a motivational speaker with the gospel? To develop spiritual content, you develop with the word and with prayer. Hallelujah. And then, component, you have to be skilled. Hallelujah. You can become a motivational speaker when you can bring, um, make a good sentence in English. And then you have to speak well. You have to work on your speaking skills. Know when to speak, how to speak, uh, when to raise your voice and when to reduce your voice. Your packaging, your dressing, your target audience. Many, many things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And even selection of the topic to preach. So that you don't um, give a, 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 a wrong topic and then people become resented before you are uh, ready to say the rest of the things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there are so many things to becoming a motivational speaker. You really have to work on yourself. Listen to others who are uh, renowned motivational speakers. Learn a few things from them that you can learn and add it to your own uniqueness. Praise the Lord. How do a young minister call to start a fresh ministry? Start in an unknown environment. When God has sent you to that unknown environment, one major thing He will do is that He will make provision for you. Many times, like when we went to South Korea, we didn't know anybody. We just came into South Korea, and one pastor just met us, Pastor Harrison. From what we ate to what we needed to buy to where we needed to go to to getting taxi and then speaking of the Korea on our behalf, He was just there. We never knew Him from anywhere. He just told both of us, hey, I like you people. Where are you from? Nigeria. He, he stood by us till he took us to the airport after two weeks that we are coming back. When we went to London, we met another one. He was a Ghanaian, um, Peter. He was there all through. See, when God leads you, he makes provision. It's just that simple. So just trust him that when, where, wherever he's sending you to, he will provide for you. Praise the Lord. Even if he doesn't see human beings that can be usable, he will bring an angel. And the angel, after the mission is accomplished, will go back to heaven. Praise the Lord. Number two. Yes, you can clap. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number two. How do one enhance his power of revelation? Pray more. Study more. Dwell in his presence. And your power of revelation will be increased. Number three. How do one cope? During God's silent moments. That is when the help you crave for seems not to be coming. I wrote a book on surviving God's silent moments. You can get that book. It will answer every of your questions. Because I was also, I also experienced a silent moment in my life. And God led me through it. And that book will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Papa, what is the meaning of apostle? What is the hierarchical placement among pastor, evangelist, prophet, bishop, and priest. The Bible just put it that way. It's not like anyone is higher than any, any other one. When we hear bishop, we think the bishop is the biggest, right? But bishop is a pastor. A bishop is a shepherd. A shepherd is a pastor. It's the same thing. Praise the Lord. Whether you answer apostle or high, there's one they answer now, senior, uh, senior prophet and senior apostle. Eh? I'm a major prophet. <laughs> All of that, they are still the same thing. See, one thing we must know is that if God has called you to be an usher in his house, he would not require of you something he has called a pastor to do. God will not place a requirement on you to meet up with the level of the pastor. The pastor has been given the capacity to become a pastor. And when the pastor is doing his work, he, we will not, God can never bring a pastor and be judging him at the same level with the usher. He will, he, when he wants to judge you, he will judge you based on your usher work. And when he wants to judge as a pastor, he will judge you based on your pastoring work. If he wants to judge you, he will judge you based on an apostle work. The, the thing is, but if you're asking, 
like the first question, I'm answering the second one be, uh, before the first one. The second one is hierarchical placement. I don't think there is a hierarchical placement. But if you ask, what is the ministry of apostle? Apostle came from the word apostolos. Um, apostolos means the sent one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, if you sent yourself and you're answering apostle, you are on your own. And um, if God sent you to become a pastor, uh -huh, that one is another one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Papa said he will give you, God will give you a mandate. He will definitely tell you what you, he wants you to do. An apostle does not really sit down to run a church. Praise the Lord. An apostle is sent to plant churches. So if after 25 years of ministry, you still have one church, you are not an apostle. Praise the Lord. And the apostolic office is something you grow into. You might not start out as this. You might start out as an evangelist. But over the years, you become an evangelistic apostle. You might start out, start out as a pastor. But over the years, you become an apostolic pastor. You might start out as a prophet. But eventually, over the years, you become... I believe you've been blessed by that word of enthronement that came your way suddenly in my...